The Washington Wizards signed Jonas Valanciunas to a three-year, $30 million contract to be the next starting center in the nation's capital. And I think this is a really good move by Will Doggins for so many reasons, but I'm going to pinpoint three next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Scott, again, and I appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, making every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day, all summer long. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started all right everybody as you know big news free agency obviously we have re-signed uh we have signed uh rashawn holmes to a two-year deal and tristan vucevic uh was let go um they uh, did not exercise his player option but looking forward some more big news like i said my apologies this came out right after i released the last video so i definitely wanted to um to get this out to you guys and let you guys know what I thought about this move. And look, I, I'm a big fan of this move. Three reasons why. But this is a good move. And I get it, 32 years old, um, but he is a guy who is going to help develop. Well, I, I'm getting to it. I mean, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but I, um, I'm going to give you my three reasons. But before I get into it, I like this move. I like this move by Will Dawkins. You know, he again, he is kind of going after the OKC model, which is either trading for bad contracts, signing veterans, who could be flipped that who could be utilized for a leadership and then flipped at the deadline later down the line, you know. But there's a lot of flexibility because look, these next three years are gonna be pivotal, very, very pivotal when it comes to the development of the young core. But you know, we'll see. I mean, because with Jonas Valachunas, we'll see about Kyle Kuzma, but Valachunas is a has been known as a wizard's killer. So let me get into my three reasons why I really like Jonas Van Valachunas with the Washington Wizards. So again, three year, 30 million dollar deal. Some people were kind of questioning the move, but look, you know, he's 32 years old, 12 years of NBA experience, um, dependable, doesn't get hurt a lot. Um, and, and the Wizards are looking at him to be a model for a young roster, you know. So if you look at um, these young guys we got in the draft in Alex R., Bob Carrington, and Keyshawn George, you know, and you add that to Bilal Kulabali, you got vets in the team are going to help them grow. You're going to help show them the ropes, not only as far as how to conduct yourself on the court, but off the court, you know? And so I think that's the model to go out there is having a lot of these vets on the team. Jonas Valachunas is going to be really, really good for Alex Sar, you know, in, in my opinion. Um, just like Bilal is going to learn a lot from, you know, and the same thing with Johnny going to learn a lot from Malcolm Brogdon, a veteran guard. You know, Kyle Kuzma is definitely, as far as the wing side of things with Bilal, Kyle Kuzma is going to be that guy to help him along because Kyle Kuzma, again, has that experience, has a championship uh, experience, man. So the veterans are in place to help these guys Going along, and I said this, and I said it time and time again, that when they hit the reset button, when they brought on Michael Winger to be the president of basketball operations, when he brought Will Dawkins in to be the general manager, and they brought Travis Schlink to be part of player personnel, they were gonna. They they said from the first moment, we're not going to cut corners, and they, and they're staying true to their word, and that's why I'm saying, it's it's refreshing to see, you know, good people, good dependable people, you know. In the front office, man, because guys who know what they're doing, guys who know the analytical side of the game, guys who know how to scout talent, guys who now know how to develop talent, guys who know how to bring in the staff and Brian Keith and David Vanderpool and other coaches and they round out the coaching staff, guys who prioritize development, right? And, you know, a lot of you guys have said it, and I said it myself, that, you know, you, you need your leadership. You know, so Jonas Valanciunas is really, really intriguing in mind because three years, okay, looking at three years, who else is on the team for three years? You're looking at Jordan Poole, you're looking at Kyle Kuzma. So you look, you kind of see what the mold is here with the Washington Wizards, where you know they, they look at this rebuild as being three years because you re realistically you're looking at three years after Jordan Poole, where which you know, depending on what their vision is for Jordan Poole at point guard going forward, he could be moved as soon as his value is at a certain peak, unless they see him as a long-term piece. But we'll see because how you know I do like Jordan Poole, and I think the organization likes Jordan Poole, but I think what why he's edging more and more closer to trade asset as opposed to long-term fit 
is because of his contract. Because, you know, where do you go from there? He's already got a, you know, a hefty contract. And after three years, you're going to be looking at trying to resign some of your guys. You know, Black Kulabali is going to be a guy who's going to be up for a rookie scale extension. So you got to look at trying to get the money around, free up money for the future. So getting to my three reasons. Number one, because um, I kind of got all, you know, I'm excited about the move. So I kind of got off a topic. Number one, why do I like it? Number, I kind of hit it. Veteran leadership and guys is teach them the ropes, man. And I think number one, I like that because again, Jonas is going to do well with Alex R. You know, Marvin Bagley III is still young. He can learn from a professional. Probably not only, again, not only based on on-court production, but how to treat your body off the court. You know, the biggest thing with Marvin Bagley III has been what? Injuries. You know, Jonas Valanciunas, availability is your best ability, right? So he's been on the court. He's been on the court to produce. Maybe there's ways he can teach him to, you know, treat his body to get him back, you know, get his body to where he can withstand an 82-game schedule. Because the, you know, the biggest thing against Marvin Bagley III is injuries. So number one is definitely – Veteran leadership. Guys are going to show these guys the road. Malcolm Brogdon, obviously not long-term piece, but he's going to be here to really show these young guards the ropes, man. You know, Jordan Poole can still learn. He's still developing. Jared Butler's young guard, still developing. You know, same thing with Johnny Davis. We'll see what's going on with him as far as his long-term fit, but he's still developing. Malcolm Brogdon is that professional that's going to show them on and off the court professionalism, how to treat your body, how to play the right way, how to be a leader. You know what I mean? And Kyle Kuzma, same thing. You know, because if you look at is is the is the Wizards signing Jonas Valanciunas kind of an indicator whether they're going to move on from Kyle Kuzma? I think so because if you look at again the contracts with Jordan Poole, Kyle Kuzma, and Jonas Valanciunas, y'all line up, y'all end around the same time. And then if you line it up, if you line that up with the fact that when their contracts run out, Bilal Koulibaly is going to be up for an extension, so they're freeing up money for the for the future, which is number two. Why I like this move because it lines up with the timelines of Jordan Poole's and Kyle Kuzma's contracts. Number three, fit for Alex R. Alex R is best served at the power four. That's where he wants to play. Now, the scouting report coming out of the draft was, for him, the best play at the top of his ability. It, he needs a rim protector center next to him. And because, his, you know, here's the thing. Alex R shows great potential as a rim protector, but he needs a polished rim protector next to him as he develops. To help him along because he's not quite where you want to be yet even though the potential is through the roof defensively and then offensively again that is an area that he's he's definitely working on he's developing those skills so you want to find again is a center who number one is a wizard's killer so the third point is you know he's going to help in the media because he look this team could possibly be a 21 team now obviously there's a lot of pieces need to be uh moved a lot of dominoes need to fall you know ty jones do they do a sign and trade um, Landry Shaman, do they move on from him? You know, Kyle Kuzma, like I said, with this move, it looks like he's possibly going to be here through, a, through the contract, or if not long enough to where, and when it's time to flip them, whether it's him, Jordan Poole, or Jonas Valanciunas, they're going to be able to flip them for some value. Because the picks, why are picks so important? Because, again, with picks, it's not only young talent that you can get as far as developing young talent and developing a young core in D.C., but it's also for those later major moves to where the, when the Wizards want to make that contending move, that one key trade, they have the draft capital to do so. When you want to pick up the, that one star piece, the Paul Georges, the James Hardens, you know, the list goes on. It takes picks to get these players. And when you want to add a, a veteran star to this young core that we're developing, draft picks are going to get you there. So it's very important to see that Will Dawkins is doing this the right way. And Valachunas, Jonas Valachunas, really good move. Very good move, not only for the immediate, but for the future, because one again, he's going to provide veteran leadership, man. He's going to show Alex R how to how to play on the court, especially with his back to the basket. You know how to be that stretch five, stretch four type of player. Yola Valanciunas is a guy who he's he's that modern day center. He can shoot the three point shot. He can shoot the mid range. He's got to, he can play with his back to the basket. You know rebounding is his, you know these are areas that he can definitely teach Alex R. So you know they're definitely to me they're a potential lineup with Yola Valanciunas is looking like this. Jordan Poole at point guard, Bilal Koulibaly at, at shooting guard, Kyle Kuzma small forward, Alex Sar at the four, and Yunus Valachunas at the five. So again, a lot of dominoes are going to fall, y'all, but this is a good move. And Will Dawkins continues to show why he has to be considered one of the one of the probably the better up and coming general managers in the NBA. Like I said, it's too early right now to really call this front office 
one of the best in the NBA because, again, we haven't seen a return from this young talent yet. It's going to take time. But I do believe that in three to four years, you're going to consider this front office one of the best in the NBA because they're doing it the right way. They're not, they're not cutting any corners. They're not going through any loopholes. They're doing it the right way. And like I said, they're making the necessary moves. So, um, again, comment below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. You know, Jonas Valanciunas is a really, really good move, in my opinion. Not a lot of money. $30 million. So you're looking at $10. Uh, $10 I wish it was $10 million a year. So it's not a bad contract. Definitely a movable contract. Yes, he's 32. But look, I mean, yeah, he's entering out of his prime. But he's still a dependable veteran who's going to have that. He's going to have value. There's a reason why Clint Capella has still got trade value because, you know, he's a guy where at 32, yes, his, you know, his, some of his abilities, especially from a shooting standpoint, are going to start to decline. But from a rebounding and rim protecting standpoint, he's that rim protector we needed. Now, we did we get one in draft? Well, kind of is Alex Sar, but we didn't necessarily get that five, like that clinging, that 80 in the draft. So this is the next best move. And that, and I kind of said this, <coughs> excuse me, coming out of draft, which is, if you don't grab a center in a draft, you definitely go get a veteran. And the Wizards did that. The Wizards are doing all the right things in front of us. So I think that this move and, and many moves to come, guys, are reasons why you should be optimistic about the Wizards. And like I said, I'm going to look at reasons to be optimistic in future uh, future content, man, Because but they're giving us more and more reasons to be, to be very, very happy with the process because, yes, it's going to be a long process, but this team's going to be a little more entertaining next year. They're going to be better. They could be a 20-win team. Maybe a 25-win team. Now, it depends on the moves made. You know, Kyle Kuzma will see. Andrew Shamit looks like he, likely he's going to get traded. Um, and it's Tyus Jones looking like a sign of trade because right now all arrows are pointing towards Jordan Poole being the man at point guard. And I think he, he deserves that chance, in my opinion. So uh, we're going to get into some um, what the itinerary is for the rest of the week. We got uh, some uh, guest stars coming on the show. So I definitely want to let you guys know what to look forward to for the rest of the week. But before we do, Tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. So, I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sports like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want to. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day all summer long. So, hit the FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of major league baseball are you watching fox sports or espn on your tv all day long have to turn down the volume with all that shouting make the switch to locked on sports today a free 24 7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or the free amazon fire tv channels app part of the locked on podcast network your team Every single day. All right, so we're gonna, before we roll um, and look at the itinerary for the rest of the week, um, we're going to take a look at it, kind of um, look at Jonas Valanciunas' stat line from the last few seasons. Because like I said, he is a known Wizards killer, as we know. He is a guy who every time he plays the Wizards, whether it was with Toronto, Memphis, or even New Orleans, he cooked us. So we'll see if he cooks for us, right? Um, this last year was actually, from a playing standpoint, was his best year. I mean, he's, he played 82 games for the New Orleans Pelicans, and he started 82, so he played every single game. So, again, availability is your best ability. Now, he did average 12.2 points a game, slightly under a block a game. Um, let's see, rebounding numbers, 8.8, .8, so not bad, not bad, not bad. I mean, his best year was 2020 to 2021 uh, season for the Memphis Grizzlies where he averaged around 12.5 rebounds. So, again, you're going to start to see a decline. You know, you, from the 2020 – the 2021 season, you saw you, you starting to see a decline, especially with the rebound numbers. But I think he's still gonna be that guy as far as a rim protector, if, if not for one, maybe two years. But again, right now, it stresses again, you know, Jonas Valanciunas is like Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole, their contracts line up. And from a leadership standpoint, you know, Jordan Poole is, is, is not so much like Kyle Kuzma or Jonas Valanciunas because he's still young. So could he be, still be part of the future? Yeah, but. He can also be flipped. If you look at his contract, he is definitely a contract where it behooves both him and the Wizards to get it some value up if they want to move him. If not, we'll see. But right now, the biggest thing with the Wizards and what Will Dawkins is doing is freeing up money for the future. And I think that if you look at those three contracts of the three players we already talked about, it helps do that when it's time to re-sign our guys, whether it's you know Black Kulabali, Alex Sar, you know, and Bob Carrington and, and, and Kai Sean George are definitely some intriguing 
young players, man. But the name of the game is acquiring talent, acquiring picks, and definitely, definitely loosening up money for the future. So they're doing it the right way. Uh, some other stats to look at with Valachunas, uh, 78% from the free throw line, that charity strike. He averaged well, – another stat to really look at is he averaged 23 and a half minutes a game. So realistically, um, with Marvin Bagley III, you know, he's had his injury issues, but we'll see how he is in training camp. But you're probably looking at around 25, maybe 30 minutes a night for Jonas Valachunas. Uh, field goal percentage is 55%. So he's a guy who's, again, is going to eat in the paint. He's going to provide interior offense, interior defense, and he's definitely going to provide mid-range and three-point capabilities. So, again, this is a really good move. So, um, again, comment below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. I'm a big fan of Jonas Valanciunas. I think this is a really good immediate um, need and move for the Wizards. I think it provides a lot of pluses, more than minuses, because, again, from a leadership standpoint, best fit for Alex Sar, and it loosens up money for the future. So there's three good reasons why you should be very optimistic about what Will Dawkins is doing for the Wizards, man, because it's, it's going to be hard. It's three years, and you'll see a lot of moves like this. but this is necessary in a rebuild when you do a rebuild right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to what is the itinerary for the rest of the week? Uh, Wednesday night, I am having Locked On Blazers as a guest on Wednesday night to talk about Malcolm Brogdon and what Malcolm Brogdon can kind of provide for the Wizards, whether in the immediate or in the long-term future, which he's not going, he's not going to be a long-term piece, but when I say long-term future, what impact can he have on these young guys? So um, and I'm also going to be on a guest, show, uh, guest on his show tomorrow night. But uh, tomorrow we're going to take a look at potential moves for Tyus Jones and Landry Shannon. Where's some places where they fit best? How can we get a sign and trade and who can we get a sign and trade with as far as Tyus Jones and Landry Shannon? And like I said, Kyle Kuzma, that's a question for you guys. I'm going to put the question up on the YouTube side of things. And the question for the night for everybody is, if Kyle Kuzma stays on the roster and they put him in small four, how many games can you realistically see the Wizards win next year with a healthy starting five of Jordan Poole, Bilal Kulabali, Kyle Kuzma, Alex R, and Jonas Valanciunas. So definitely let me know. Like I said, I'll put the, the, I'll put the poll up tonight. You guys let me know what you're thinking. So again, appreciate you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow night. We're going to talk a, a little bit about Tyus Jones, where he fits, and Landry Shaman. So everybody, uh, hail to the Wizards, and peace to you guys tomorrow night.